Chapter 12. Lying, Cheating, Breaking Promises, and Stealing. This is the last lecture that I'll be bringing. Now, there are chapters 13, 14, 15, and 16, um, but the course is so compressed that we're not going to be able to cover those. But if you would like to, you can certainly read and then write a summary of each chapter, uh, turn it in to the Dropbox, and I will give you uh, credit for doing that. But that's up to you. Um, the only chapters that you're responsible for in this course are chapters 1 through 12. And so this is it. This is the final chapter that I'm going to be lecturing on. The issues that make up uh, the content of this chapter constitute the basic fabric of everyday moral life. This cuts across public life as well as private lives. All of us will have experience with at least one of the things that we're going to talk about and probably all four areas. Uh, have any of you uh, downloaded but not paid for music from the internet? Or maybe copied music from a friend that they paid for but you didn't? Or illegally copied software or made a copy of a movie or anything like that? Um, that's the kind of thing that we're talking about. Uh, would you shoplift music from a store? Of course you wouldn't. But I would venture to guess that the majority of you watching this have downloaded music illegally. What's the difference? Uh, in my lecture course, when we discuss this, uh, many of the students will say, well, there's a big difference. Uh, in the one, you're in the store, it's you're touching it, you're putting it in your pocket, you're stealing it. But the reality is that either way, you're stealing it. Uh, in the same way that plagiarizing a paper, you're stealing someone's intellectual property. So can this behavior be justified? All of us have justified uh, to ourselves one time or another. But can this behavior be ethically or morally justified? We'll come back to this discussion as we look at some other moral issues. Many of the issues dealt with here apply to um, 13, 14, 15 as well. Now we're going to define some terms. Lying is an intentionally deceptive message in the form of a statement or piece of information deliberately presented as being true. Anything meant to deceive or give a wrong impression. A white lie is something that we all probably deal with every day. And that is a falsehood that's not meant to injure anyone and is often considered as having a little moral import. At this point, I don't want to go into major discussion of lying. We're going to do that a little bit later. But um, a little white lie, for instance, we all, I think, can probably agree that lying is wrong. But you take into which is the greater harm, telling me that you like my tie, when indeed you think it's the ugliest tie you've ever seen, or uh, hurting my feelings, which is which is the bigger wrong, deliberately hurting somebody's feelings when you don't need to, or telling a little white lie. Um, there are different kinds of lies, and we'll really go into this, as I keep saying a bit later, but a little later in this lecture. But lies of commission and lies of omission are the two most common types of lies. A lie of commission is a direct statement that is an outright lie. For instance, uh, I'm not wearing a tie. <laughs> well, you can see, I am wearing a tie. I realize that that's inane and it doesn't really matter, but uh, that's, that is a lie of commission. I'm not wearing a tie. I'm not in my study. A lie of omission is a lie that involves not stating certain information that is vital to an important human activity. All right, let's simplify that. Um, I am selling you my car, and it says that it has 36,000 miles on it. Uh, I know that it has 136,000 miles on it. It's turned over, but you don't know that. And you say, how many miles are on that, Dave? And I say, well, 36,000 miles. That is an law, uh, a lie of commission, bold face lie. Now, a lie of omission would be, how many miles are on that, that uh, car, Dave? And I say, well, go look at the speedometer. Uh, it'll tell you. Uh, I'm withholding information. I, I don't tell you everything that you need to know. 
That is just as much a lie as if I had told you 36,000 when in reality there's 136,000. Cheating is deceiving by trickery, swindling, misleading, fraud, basically fraud. You're a con man, a grifter, uh, acting dishonestly, you're practicing fraud. A promise is a declaration or vow that one will or will not do something. And to break a promise is to fail to conform to or act contrary to or violate the promise. Uh, my grandma used to say, a promise made is a debt unpaid. Stealing is taking something without right or permission, generally in a surreptitious way. Um, if I give you permission to borrow my truck and you borrow my truck, you're not stealing, but if you take the keys from the key hook in the middle of the night and you, that, that's stealing. Now, what if it's my daughter? Well, I still haven't given her permission to do it. It's still theft. It's still stealing. Up to this point, we have everything that we've discussed, we've broken up into consequentialist and non-consequentialist, and even further into act or rule. Well, a rule non-consequentialist would say that any of the four acts, lying, cheating, stealing, or breaking promises, and we'll call those the four acts for the rest of this lecture, um, you, you can't justify it because you can't universalize it. Uh, in other words, everyone ought to lie. Everyone ought to steal. Everyone ought to break promises. You can't do it. And so a rule non-consequentialist is going to oppose a lying, cheating, stealing, or breaking promises. Um, now, a consequentialist someone who looks at the outcomes and an act non-consequentialist, uh, those views are going to be a little bit different. Um, an act non-consequentialist would not necessarily take a stand for or against these issues unless they felt like doing so. Uh, in other words, if one feels like lying or cheating, then it's okay depending on the outcome. Um, a consequentialist would accept any of the four actions if the greatest good consequences would result because of course good ends justify whatever means all right we're gonna start with a lying we're gonna talk of pros and cons about the four acts um, <clears throat> lying is wrong because it dupes and deprives others it causes distrust in relationships and then of course there's the domino argument and it seems to have more relevance here than it does in other moral issues because very often one lie of necessity leads to another to protect the first. And pretty soon you're uh, telling so many lies you can't remember what you're lying about or what you've already told. You pretty much need a notebook to keep, uh, to keep track on what you said. Lying gives an unfair advantage or power to the liar. And lying... Um, it just has a negative effect on society in general. Uh, have you ever seen the movie The Invention of Lying? Uh, Ricky Gervais. Really interesting concept. Uh, in the movie, Ricky's at the end of his rope. No money, he's lost his job. But his society that he lives in is different than ours in that no one ever lies. They're not able to. They're not wired that way. And one day, Ricky needs, he's being evicted because he can't pay his rent. And he goes in to the bank and he snaps. And they say, well, you have no money in your account. And he says, well, you must be mistaken because I have thousands of dollars in my account. And of course, oh, well, we're sorry. And they just hand him money. And the rest of the movie follows after that. You know, he has a lot of power because he is able to lie and others are not. We would also say that you know, there's a certain self-destructiveness in lying that destroys you as well as society. Now, those are arguments against lying. These are some arguments that Thoreau lists that are in saying that it's all right. Lying uh, is justified in defense of the innocent, including self-defense. Lying is justified for reasons of national security, provided this reason is not abused. Lying is moral when it is done in order to protect trade secrets in business. 
And then little white lies should be allowed as a way of getting along with others in our daily lives. Now, you know, it's kind of like my wife will say, well, do these genes make me look fat? There's no right answer to that. I mean, the, the only thing, if you say, well, of course not. She's like, oh, oh, well, you hesitated. You you, you think that these genes make me look fat. Um, or if, of course, you say, yes, they, they make you look fat. Well, then you're in serious trouble. So the only way to deal with a little white lie like that is to fake a heart attack. <laughs> You can't answer because, you know, you're, you're having a CBA. But seriously, little white lies, um, again, what's the greater harm? I don't think any of us would say that lying is acceptable, but what's the greater harm? Now, the moderate position on lying generally accepts the attitude that honesty is the best policy. One must be very careful of the consequences of any lie, especially or even little white lies. And then lying is not the only alternative to hurtful truths. Sometimes you have to tell the truth, uh, but how you tell the truth can make a huge difference. You can do it gently, compassionately, uh, and, and offer some hope whenever possible. <sighs> Different types of lies. I mean, there's so many. Lies of bad faith, Barefaced lie, the big lie. Hitler said that you could fool people more often if you told a whopper, a big lie. People would buy that um, before they'd buy small lies, and he certainly used that to good effect. There's bluffing. Um, Butler lie, for instance, is a term coined by researchers at Cornell University, and it describes uh, lies which are usually sent electronically and are used to terminate conversations or save face. For instance, um, sending a text to someone reading, I have to go, the waiter is here. Um, you may not even be in a restaurant, but you're doing that is an easy way of breaking off a conversation. Uh, that is an example of a butler lie. Uh, contential lies, economy with the truth, emergency lie, exaggeration, fabrication, a fib, a half-truth, Honest lie. Uh, that's interesting. It's characterized by verbal statements or actions that inaccurately describe history, background, uh, present situations. Uh, there is typically no intent to deceive, and the individual is unaware that their information is false. Uh, an honest lie, an example would be sometimes I get the stupidest things sent to me uh, in my email or on Facebook. You know, <clears throat> It's not true, and you snope it, and you find out that it's not true. But the person that sent it to you thinks that it is true. And so uh, it's a lie, but it's an honest lie. Lies to children, <laughs> uh, often a platitude, which may use euphemisms, which is told to make an adult subject acceptable to children. The stork brought you. Um, Santa Claus, the tooth fairy, the Easter bunny. Lies to children. Lying through your teeth, a noble lie. Perjury, very serious. Perjury is the act of lying or making uh, verifiably false statements on a material matter under oath. Um, former impeached President Clinton um, was convicted of perjury and lost his law license. We take this very seriously. Clinton didn't seem to take it very seriously, uh, but, but the rest of, of society does. Puffery. Uh, you, you'll hear this. Uh, especially recently about uh, pizzas. Puffery is an exaggerated claim typically found in advertising and publicity announcements, such as the highest quality at the lowest price. Uh, how do you prove that? It's like when I see new improved flavor on a, on a type of dog food. How do they know? D does someone get paid to taste the dog food? And uh, how many types of dog food would they taste? How do you know it's new and improved? That's called puffery. So many different kinds of lies. The ones you really need to be concerned with are commission and omission, but I just wanted to illustrate that by no means are they the only types. Uh, if people have to lie, more on the moderate position, then they must try to make the consequences of the lying as harmless as possible. One should avoid habitual lying, and you need to be aware that lying can also have a bad effect on the liar as well as the person being lied to. One should never lie about important matters that may affect the recipient of the lie adversely. 
And lying can be allowed when there is no other recourse and when innocent life is really at stake. We go back to Kant's example. Uh, you're sitting in your house, your wife's in, or her husband's in the other room. A madman breaks in to kill them, and they ask you, well, is your husband or your wife at home? Uh, are you going to tell the truth? Of course not. You're going to say, why no? Why no, they're not? And that kind of a lie, according to the moderate position, is acceptable. Although, to be fair, Kant would say it's not. Cheating is related to lying in that deception and dishonesty are both being practiced, but lying is generally verbal, whereas cheating is basically nonverbal. Arguments against cheating, it's unfair and unjust to others. You pad your resume, um, falsified qualifications, uh, will have a serious effect on everyone. Um, and it can affect the cheater's relationships with others. Some arguments for cheating. Now remember, these are not my arguments, but um, the world is a dog-eat-dog -dog jungle, one in which you must often cheat to survive and to get ahead. And then there's the attitude, well, winning is everything, no matter how you do it. And that's the attitude that's prevalent in college football today. It's not about how you play the game or building character. It's all about winning. Uh, everyone does it. Therefore, why not cheat? If everyone's cheating, you're at a disadvantage if you don't, right? And it's all right to cheat as long as you don't get caught. Moving on, breaking promises. Uh, implied agreements such as the following allow us to live safely and meaningful, <coughs> excuse me, meaningfully with each other in society not to do harm to one another. This is an implied agreement, not to lie or cheat, to obey laws imposed for the general good, to stop, for instance, at red lights and at stop signs, to treat each other with respect and dignity, to keep promises that we make. Now, this implies certain agreement or relationships with one another that we may or may not have. Breaking promises. Breaking promises is a form of dishonesty. Uh, just like cheating. In earlier days, a person's promise or word was an integral part of their reputation. But now many promises or agreements have to be written down for various reasons. Uh, one of that would be that they're more complex than they used to be. In other words, you can't just shake hands because uh, the promise is too complex. And fewer people actually honor their agreements. And so having it in writing is necessary for possible litigation. Some arguments against breaking promises. Breaking promises destroys human relationships. The domino argument, as always. Breaking promises seriously affects people's life choices. <coughs> There's a show I like. You may watch it, The Office. And there was an episode early into its run where uh, Michael Scott, who is the manager of Dunder Mifflin Paper Company, he had made a promise uh, to these grade schoolers that if they stayed in and graduated, that he would pay for them to go to college. Now, he just thought he was making puffery. He wanted to keep that promise. He, he actually felt that by the time these third graders graduated, he'd be in a position where he could afford to do this. But, of course, he wasn't, and he had to back off on his promise. But, see, these kids had counted on Michael Scott giving them a scholarship, and so it, it devastated these kids. Very funny episode, but um, not so funny circumstances. Breaking promises seriously affects people's life choices. Breaking promises destroys general social trust, and it costs you something. Loss of uh, personal integrity may result. Arguments for breaking promises, again, these are Thoreau's, not mine, and they're not really his. He's just coming up with, with pros and cons. <coughs> One should have the individual freedom to decide which promises to keep and which to break. Any rules against breaking promises are a denial of such freedom. And yet, a promise is actually a form of a contract, and you are required to keep a contract. Breaking promises should be allowed when more important moral issues are involved, such as protecting and saving human life. 
and it should be allowed when no harm is done to anyone breaking the promise. And it should also be pointed out that life happens. Sometimes, for instance, you promise to take the kids to the movies, but you have to go to work instead. Well, which promise is greater? I mean, it's an implied promise that you're going to su support your kids. And so uh, feeding them or taking them to the movies. Of course, children have difficult uh, difficulty understanding this, but um, life happens. Promises made in unusual situations, for example, uh, as to satisfy someone on his or her deathbed, can justifiably be broken later on, especially for good reasons. More arguments for. And just as we often say, uh, caveat emptor, or buyer beware, recipients of promises also should beware, that they shouldn't count on these promises being kept. Stealing. A basic assumption in most societies is that people are entitled to what they inherited, invested, created, and earned. Therefore, stealing generally is considered to be immoral, unless, of course, you're part of uh, Occupy Wall Street, and then it's okay because um, apparently your needs are more important than someone else's. Uh, I beg to differ. I believe that, uh, as Thoreau says, the basic assumption is that people are entitled to what they have inherited, created, invested, and earned. People have property rights, which are often considered as important or even more important than life itself. Stealing breaks down the trust people have in one another. Stealing constitutes a serious invasion of privacy, and then, of course, the domino argument. Once you begin to steal, it begins easier and easier to steal, so you can justify it uh, more and more often. Stealing has a destructive effect, uh, both physical and psychological on victims. Thieves themselves can be seriously affected through loss of integrity and punishment, I mean, if you're caught. And as with the other three issues, stealing also has a bad effect on society in general. Now, some arguments for, to me, these read right out of Occupy Wall Street. We live in a corrupt economic system in which the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. Sometimes the only way to achieve some sort of balance between these inequities is to steal. Um, I just, that's an argument for. I don't personally see that it's a valid argument, but <clears throat> stealing should be allowed in crucial emergency situations, such as to prevent, to prevent the starvation of children. I don't think any of us would disagree with that. I mean, there are degrees and degrees of anything. Um, if you steal a Wii, I think the court would take a dimmer view than if you steal formula for your children. Now, stealing is a way out for those who crave a life of thrills, adventure, and excitement. And then the argument, it's allowable to steal from institutions and organizations because they can afford it and end up with most of our money anyway. And you don't know them. They're a nameless, faceless society. So you're really not stealing from anyone. And then the argument, as with cheating, one ought to be allowed to steal as long as one doesn't get caught. Another argument for it can be condoned when it involves stealing government and military secrets from potential or real enemies so as to protect one's own national security. All right, we have quickly gone through chapter 12. There's so much more to it. There are case studies and um, discussion of some of this is very interesting. But um, again, if you have questions, uh, email me or give me a call. And um, as we wind the class down, I just want to say thank you for taking the course. I hope you got quite a bit out of it. And have a tremendous day. Bye-bye.